So Dr. Shoy, could tell me what's new in the paper that's just been published? So in this paper, for the first time, what we show is that we can specifically in space immobilize proteins, two proteins at the same time, in very defined geometry. And the reason why that hasn't been done before and why that's interesting is because we have this view of growing tissues or organs in a dish. And we know that proteins are very important to define cell function and cell fate. So working with uh, stem cells derived from the brain or the retina, we've demonstrated that we can spatially immobilize proteins that will influence their differentiation within a three-dimensional geometry. And nothing like that had been done before. And the importance of immobilizing multiple proteins at the same time is that proteins lose their bioactivity. So in order for them to function properly and function in space properly, is um, to keep them bioactive. And why is spatial immobilization important is that our tissues and organs in our body are 3D. We are 3D beings. And so if you have this view of building tissues and organs, we have to guide cell fate in 3D and have the ability to look at how cells interact with each other within a 3D environment. So there's been a lot of work done on building armatures or scaffolding for out of bone and cartilage and that kind of stuff to grow organs. But this time you're using a chemical path, really, right? Absolutely. So what's interesting here is that this three-dimensional gel, so imagine jello. Um, but now imagine that within your jello, you could chemically immobilize proteins just by changing the chemistry. And so instead of having a physical geometry, you almost have a chemical geometry, and we're using chemistry to guide cell fate, as opposed to having big holes and complex scaffolding geometry, physical gels, we're really using chemistry as a way to guide where cells grow and guide how cells uh, differentiate or how, say, a stem cell becomes a more mature cell. So when you say differentiate in stem cells, let's sort of break that down. So you're dealing with omnipotent stem cells that can then become tissue of different types depending on what activates them, right? Yeah. So if we think about the retina, for example, the retina is divided into seven layers. And if you start with a retinal stem cell, it has the capacity to become all those seven different cell types. So what we're doing is immobilizing, for example, proteins that will cause their differentiation into, for example, photoreceptors or bipolar neurons or other cell types that would make up those seven different cell types in the retina. And so that's how we're taking protein immobilization within a 3D scaffold to mimic what we see in vivo. So you want to make an eye out of jello, really? Yeah, uh, an eye out of jello. That's uh, or at least the retina, which is right. the part you know when light enters the eye, it hits the retina, and then it um, takes those messages into the brain. So the seeing part of the eye. Right. So let's talk about that because the the retina is basically a, a two dimensional object. I mean, it's a flat plane. So why not just sort of and it's laminated. You said it was in seven layers. So why not just create a laminate by laying down one layer of cells after another? Why make it? into a complex 3D structure in hydrogel. Okay, so even what you have said is not two layers, so, or, or two dimensional. Right. Two dimensional would be a flat sheet. But what you're saying is you've got a series of sheets on top of each other, right. and already that gives it a three dimensional character. Um, but the idea of laying layer by layer on top of each other is an interesting idea. What we gain with the methodology that we've developed in our lab is by using chemical uh, photo patterning methodologies, we're able to ensure the interaction of the cells in each of those layers because they're not distinct layers. In order for any tissue or organ to function, all the different cell types have to interact. And specifically in the retina, there's many different types of neurons and they have to conduct electrical signals in order for that to get to the brain. So what we gain in the chemical patterning methodology is um, we really enhance the ability for those cells to interact with each other and to communicate. So what's the end game in terms, apart from being able to create a retina out of jello, um, what's the end game in terms of other organs? Will, will this kind of system lead to the developing of uh, pancreas, heart, those kinds of organs as well? 
So I think there's two very different things that we can learn from from this three-dimensional uh, tissue-like structures. One is we could use it to create different tissues and organs, as you said, using it really as a platform technology to look at the interaction of different cells and, and build tissues and organs. You know, to be clear, we haven't built a retina yet, yeah. and so even that would be uh, fantastically interesting and exciting. But also, you could have a much more fundamental understanding by growing cells in a 3D environment similar to what they grow, um, similar to an environment in which they grow in our bodies, we can develop a much better understanding of cell processes and cell interactions. And so even in our lab, we're starting to look at this methodology uh, in uh, applications related to cancer, looking at metastasis, trying to understand how do tissues develop, how, do, how does disease develop, and how we could expand this um, to a better fundamental understanding, and also with this view of, of developing tissues and organs. And does it have diagnostic application as well? So that's what we're hoping, is that, you know, so much of what we know about cell culture and how cells behave is growing them on very hard surfaces, on polystyrene, these plastic dishes, and growing them in these cell culture environments. So by moving even to a hydrogel, this jello-like substance, which is very soft and malleable, that in itself mimics the mechanical properties of many of the soft tissues in our body. And by then introducing proteins and other cell types that influence their interactions, we can ideally use this perhaps in the future for drug screening applications. Um, and so in better defining the cellular microenvironment, we can better understand how cells function and we can better understand then how drugs would function on those cells. And ideally, this will lead to um, how drugs would function in our own cells. And you could even imagine, so this isn't today, but it's fun to use your imagination. Mm -hmm. You could even imagine this in use as personalized medicine. So if you took a biopsy of someone with a disease, for example, grew it in the appropriate environment and screened drugs against that person's disease as opposed to disease in general. So we're definitely a long way right. from that, but this would be a view towards the future. Cool. Thank you very much, and good luck with your retina. Thank you. Okay.